in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome to this service of Word and Sacrament. And this is brought to you by uh, the united benefits of the parish churches of Old Brampton Barlow and the Ecumenical uh, Fellowship of Lousley Green. This is a special Sunday, the last in fact uh, of the church year, known as the celebration of Christ the King. The Christian calendar is celebrated in worship, devotion and prayer, the key landmarks in the life of a saviour, culminating in his heavenly enthronement today. Next Sunday, we begin again uh, with the start of Advent, and I'm very pleased to announce that next Sunday's Advent Sunday online service will be taken by our new incumbent, Reverend Sarah Culver, who will be collated and licensed in this coming week. At our present time of crisis and uncertainty, we need, as never before, patterns in our lives that are comforting, which above all point us to a sense of real hope. The Christian story is one such. In the course of this service, we shall be singing two hymns, one at the beginning and one near to the end. Although this is a communion service in which you, as virtual congregation, can't physically take part, the life of the Spirit assures us that in God, you and in the Spirit will be part of this service wherever you are. And so we sing our first hymn, At the Name of Jesus.
And so we prepare our hearts by saying together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. And because we are less than perfect, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and faith, faith with all. As we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And the words which show us God's forgiveness. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through jesus christ our lord amen, amen. and so having come before god to admit our faults we are free to say together the gloria glory, glory to, to god, god in the highest and peace to his people on earth, earth. lord god Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. And the collect prayer for today, the celebration of Christ the King. Eternal Father, whose Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King. Keep the Church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for today is brought to us by Peter Goforth of the Barlow Fellowship. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered, 
on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you push with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading for today is brought to us by Andrew Rosser of the Fellowship of Old Brampton. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Because of all this, now that I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and the love you bear towards all God's people, I never cease to give thanks for you when I mention you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the all-glorious Father, may confer on you the spiritual gifts of wisdom and vision, with the knowledge of him that they bring. I pray that your inward eyes may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope to which he calls you. How rich and glorious is the share he offers you among his people in their inheritance. And how vast are the resources of his power open to us who have faith. His mighty strength was seen at work when he raised Christ from the dead and enthroned him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all government and authority, all power and dominion, and any title of sovereignty that commands allegiance. Not only in this age, but also in the age to come, he put all things in subjection beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who is filling the universe in all its parts. This is the word of the Lord. Our Gospels and Sermon for today is brought to us by Kate Brookbank, our, our licensed reader. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people, one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right, and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come! You who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. 
Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do. For me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in my sight. O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Today we celebrate Christ the King, and from our Gospel reading we hear the well-known parable about judgment and faith, the sheep and the goat. Now that poses a question for us all. Are we a sheep or are we a goat? Are we going to live and obey by the Good Shepherd, or are we going to wander away and do our own thing? Do we think that because we have done so much good in our lives, that will make us a sheep? Do we think that because others have done bad and evil things, that will make them a goat? If we divided ourselves today into pens of sheep and goats, which one would we go into? Or do we realise that this judgement is not made by us, but by Christ the King? We are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, unconditional, undeserved, unlimited and overflowing, complete and total forgiveness of sin, an absolute welcome into his kingdom. Not based on what we have done, but totally and completely because of what Jesus has done for us. Dying on the cross for our sins, arising again to give us victory. The parable today is about judgment of who enters the kingdom and the separation of the good and the not so good. It is not meant to make us think that we need to do more, but it challenges us to reflect on the great commandments and the great commission with which we began. So what does it mean to love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind and all our strength. What does it mean to love our neighbour as ourselves? What does it mean to go and make disciples of all nations? How do we do this? Why do we do this? We don't obey any of these commands to earn favour with God because that is ours by God's grace. We don't love God or neighbour or share the gospel so that we can stand before the throne on judgment day and say, see what I've done, I've done all of this. We love because he first loved us. Our task is simply to reach out and show Jesus love, to be responsive to the Spirit of God who reminds us of our abundance and compels us to go deeper and more generously into our communities. This God is Christ the King. 
There was an article several weeks ago in the Daily Mail featuring a story about a man revelling in wealth but squandering money and gambling. He spends most of his time partying in hotels and living in luxury. He has four wives, also many mistresses, is unfaithful and fathered many children. This man is called Maha Vajura Longkorn, who was crowned King of Thailand in May 2019. His behaviour is not the behaviour we expect from a king, although some see him as a ruler with godlike status and is worshipped and idolised by many. However, others, because of his behaviour, are calling for an end of his monarchy. This is stark contrast to Her Majesty Elizabeth our Queen, who took on the responsibility to be a queen with dedication and commitment. She directs and advises Parliament and is consulted with. She's kind, caring and affectionate and very interested in what people do. She encourages people to take part in activities and tries to balance history and tradition with the modern world. King Harold of Norway is very similar in his personality, reign and leadership. He revels in being with and amongst his people, often referred to as the man of the people. God sends his son in human form to earth to be with and amongst his people, to live and to be with them, the man of the people, humble, kind and generous. Jesus proclaimed his ministry and the way to the kingdom by teaching and healing and showing signs to his followers. Although Jesus is the king of glory, we do not see him with the symbols of office and authority. We do not see him wearing a crown full of jewels or holding a solid golden orb or scepter. He is not clothed in expensive robes or gowns, or sit on impressive thrones, or live in a palace of gold and splendour. He might be king of glory, but he rides into Jerusalem on a donkey, ends up being mocked and wearing a crown of thorns, and then being publicly humiliated and crucified on a wooden cross. Not the expected ending for a king. The king of Thailand goes round flaunting his kinship. He does what he wants and throws his weight around. His behaviour is full of disrespect, ignorance and arrogance, even though he is a king. Jesus Christ is a king, but he gently tells stories and parables as to how to behave in the kingdom of God. The I am sayings in John's Gospel, such as I am the bread of life, I am the way, the truth and the life, tells us that Jesus is the good shepherd, known also as the servant king. These I am sayings show the very being of Christ the king. Jesus Christ does not go around flaunting and boasting the fact that he is a king. We remember the conversation with Pontius Pilate when Jesus says, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Our earthly kings and queens will come and go as their reign is taken over by others. But Christ the King will never be replaced as there is only one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit who will never change and never be someone else. Today is the last Sunday in the Christian year, when we have spent the last year looking at the life of Jesus, 
his teaching and what it means to be a Christian and to believe in him. We will meet Jesus as we live justly and we will show Jesus to others as we live justly. Remember these are the words of Jesus, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. So live the grace of Jesus justly. He is truly Christ the King. As we start Advent next week, we move towards Christmas and the birth of a little boy, born in a stable, meek and mild, but the King of glory, King of peace, Christ the King. Amen. And so we say together the words of the Iona Creed. We believe that God is present in the darkness before dawn, in the waiting and uncertainty where fear and courage join hands, conflict and caring link arms, and the sun rises over barbed wire. We believe in a with us God who sits down in the midst to share our humanity. We affirm a faith that takes us beyond a safe place, into action, into vulnerability, and onto the streets. We commit ourselves to work for change and put ourselves on the line, to bear responsibility, take risks, live powerfully, and face humiliation to stand with those on the edge, to choose life and be used by the Spirit for God's new community of hope. Amen. Our intercessory prayers are brought to us today by David Riley, the Fellowship at Last Degree. Intercessions for Christ the King. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they, bringing forth the fruit of good works, may by you be richly rewarded, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord of the past and the future, we thank you for the last church year. We thank you for the fellowship and joy of our Christian family, though parted from them. We pray for the coming year, that we may benefit from the teaching and wisdom of the Church and grow in faith and knowledge of you. We pray for the health and well-being of our nation, that all who are faithful and anxious may be at peace and free from worry. We pray for the isolated and the housebound, that we may be alert to their needs and care for them in their vulnerability. We pray for our homes and families, our schools and young people, and all in any kind of need or distress. We pray for a blessing on our local community, that our neighbourhoods may be places of trust and fellowship and friendship, where all are known and cared for. We pray for all who are made in the image and likeness of God. We are created and sustained by the breath of God. We are held in the palm of God's hand. We are loved by God with an everlasting love. We are made by the God of vision, whose plans for us are a fullness, not harm, who gives us a future and hope. We are created by God to live a life worthy of our vocations. We are held by God in whom we live and move and have our being. We pray for all those in positions of power, that they may govern with wisdom and integrity, serving the needs of their people, especially as we prepare to leave Europe. May your reign come. We pray for the Church, the sign of your reign, that it may be extended to your welcome and people of every race and every background. And we pray for Sarah and her ministry in our parishes as she joins us. May your kingdom come. 
we pray for Christians of every denomination, that together we may come to understand the royal priesthood you bestowed on us in baptism. May your dominion come. We pray for these, our communities of faith, that attentive to your word, we may always worship in spirit and in truth, and working together with Sarah through these difficult times, may attain the proclamation of your good news. May your reign come. In an act of will, O God, we place ourselves in your presence. In an act of faith, we open ourselves to your light. In an act of silence, O Lord, we rest in your glory. In an act of love, O Lord, we put ourselves in your hands. And in a time of silence, we pray for all who are unwell, those known to us and those known only to you, those in need of prayer for healing and care with support. Gracious God, give skill, sympathy and resilience to all who are caring for the sick and your wisdom to those searching for a cure, especially the scientists working on COVID vaccines. Strengthen them with your spirit that through their work many will be restored to health. And as we continue to struggle in lockdown, lastly we pray for ourselves and for those we love. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And so the peace. Christ himself is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord is here. His Spirit, His Spirit is, is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and the archangels and the powers of all creation, we sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, 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 holy Lord. Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your Divine Majesty, renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, Blessing and, and honour honor and glory and power, and power be yours forever and ever. And so we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace.
And so we pray. Stir Stir up, O Lord, Lord, the wills of your faithful faithful people, people, that they plenteously bring forth the fruit of your works. May by you be plenteously rewarded. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we come to our final hymn for all the saints. And God's blessing, the blessing of God, the hope of God, fill you with all joy and peace in believing. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Thank you for joining us for this service of word and sacrament and I pray that in the days and weeks ahead you may know the comfort 
of God and a sense of peace in troubling times. <laughs>